Hello and welcome to our post-match show after a nil-nil draw at Wickham Wanderers. As you can see, it's been a pretty cold one here and there's not too much to talk about. But to help me analyse the game is obviously club legend Andy Booth and one of his former teammates, Ify Anura. How are you both? You OK? Hi, guys. Fantastic. Like I said there, Boothy, there's not too much to talk about, but ultimately, a point on the road, you can't really argue with that, can you? No, you can't, no. But I think it, it would have it would a fair result, won't it? Uh, I think both sides will probably go back quite happy with with a point. I thought first half, we just pipped it. I thought, again, it was very, very tight. I uh, thought we had two or three chances, thought in Benza was very, very good tonight and he put two or three great balls in. Dear Carby just got on, couldn't get on the end of one and then Navisar hit, hit the post uh, on the other. Uh, but then second half, it just, we just seemed to cancel each other out, to be, to be honest. And after about 65, 70 minutes, it had nil-nil written all over it. But, but to be fair, both teams tried to, to grab the winner. Uh, Carlos changed formation. Uh, Probably didn't work out for us really. I thought we lost a bit of fluidity, uh, but at least we'll go, we look like we we're going for for a win, and and so were Wickham. So in the end, I say we're probably a fair result. It's a difficult place to come, isn't it? If I know people will will look at it, and Wickham obviously promoted from from Skybet League One last year, but they've only had one defeat in their last five, and they drew here nil nil with Brentford on Saturday so they've really adapted to the level now and, and they've become a, a good championship opposition yeah I mean the game's always attritional I think the conditions of that Tuesday night Wickham's blown a, blown a gale you know conditions weren't great there's a lot of there's a lot of endeavour there but not, a, not an awful lot of quality I'd agree with Booty probably the best moments for town went down the right with them bends a couple of good balls in um, one just before half time with a chance at the back post, probably the closest uh, either team came to, to scoring, really. But um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what happened first off, um, I think, I mean, for the start, Wickham are well organised. You know, Gareth sets his teams up well. But, you know, there's nothing too sophisticated about what they do. You put up front a big um, Akin Fenway and they play off him, you know, and they get, and they get runners off him, but they're very solid defensively, good back four. Don't give an awful lot away. So the onus that them on town and anyone who plays against them is to try and move them, move the ball. I think they were just a bit too slow. You know, it's, I mean, Wickham didn't go and press them to any to any degree. So the onus then was the centre halves, whether it's Saul or Shinda when he's on the pitch, to just go and go forward with the ball, carry it a bit deeper into the territory and commit players, and then move the ball quick. Didn't quite do that in the in the in the first half. I actually thought he started the second half quite quite well. He did that a lot better. But then the stoppages came and really made the game really bitty. And like Booth, he says towards the end of the game, you can almost see what I was going to uh, peter out. And you know, for town, um, clean sheet, especially after Saturday, clean sheet, point on the road, not a great place to come to. You'll take it. You'll, you'll probably take that in the in the big scheme of things. We defended. Yeah, I, I, didn't we? Sorry, I, I thought we defended. No, no, you go, Boozy. Especially after after Saturday's game, where we had a few uh, bad mistakes. Obviously, Carl's made a few changes, but thought today was tonight was solid. Uh, Ryan making it uh, with his debut or one of it. He's not played many games as he is. As Ryan. Yeah, he's the second championship appearance for us. Start for yeah. us. Yeah, which. He, I thought he was, I thought he was solid. Uh, they had a little bit of rush of blood in the first half when he came out and 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 ended that ball, but he didn't panic. Got got back into into position, held his, held his his line to let the defenders get back in and obviously stop it on on the line. Uh, but yeah, I thought we def- I thought we defended well a lot better than we did uh, did on Saturday. Uh, and and like if he says, I can firm what is. It, it, no matter how old he is, he's, he's, he's hard to play against and he puts himself about, he pins the, he pins the defenders. And, and I thought at times we, 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 play, we played him well uh, and, and, we, and we, we kept that back four uh, very solid, uh, especially, especially first half and then, and then going into a three, three second half. I thought one positive out of tonight is definitely the, the defensive, defensive unit. 
Let, let, let's speak about yeah. Ryan Stonefield, Booty. Um, obviously, for, for him, like I said, it was his second Skybet Championship start. His second Skybet Championship clean sheet as well. He's, he's one that's come through the academies. He's really developed. How, how impressed have you been with him? Like you said, he had a couple of tentative moments, but, but on the whole, he, he commanded his box quite well. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, and it's great to see. I know we all say it, and it's great to see a local lad doing well. He's, he's, he's been at the club a long time and he's waited for his chance. I know he's been out on loan a couple of times and with every report I, I've had from all the goalkeeping uh, coaches o- over the years, they're all saying what, what a great great goalkeeper Ryan's going to be. And, and you don't play for your country at under under 21s and the, le- the levels that he's played not to be a good goalkeeper. And it's just good that he's got his chance. Uh, obviously, unfortunate for Ben, I- isolating. Uh, and obviously, Pereira on, on Saturday making a couple of mi- couple of mistakes. And this is Ryan's chance now to, to take it. And if he is kept a clean sheet, as you said, I thought he went from strength to strength du- during the game and, and very commanding at, at the end of it. So... Now he's got that number one shirt, it's his to keep. And it'd be, be great to see him have a, have a long run because remember what happened to Alex Smithers? Alex Smithers got, got thrown in at, at Leeds all them years ago. And, yeah. and, never, and now this is Ryan's chance to... It's not easy as a goalkeeper. When, you, when, you, when there's 10 outfield players, you've always got a chance if you're on the bench to, to get on and, and prove yourself. But... When you're a goalkeeper, you're waiting for injuries, you're waiting for suspensions or, or bad bad run of form. And now Ryan Ryan's there, and, and he's for me is is now he's got the number one shirt, and it's for him to keep. Uh, and if I, I interrupted you slightly there, obviously we, we're talking about uh, clean sheets for for Huddersfield Town to get a clean sheet after conceding four in in the manner that we did at Stoke City is a real positive, isn't it? And it'll do a load of for the confidence of the defenders. Yeah, going back to what Willie really says, I mean, it's good, like he says, great to see a local lad in, you know, the, a goalkeeper's position. It's all about temperament. And he had that little bit of rush of the blood early on in the first half. But after that, he settled down. And that's what you want to see. Mistake happen, but you, out of time, you recover from it. So he, 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 he recovered well. And, and he used the ball well. He reminds me physically of the boy, and I've forgotten his name, it, I worked with them a little bit with the under 21s, uh, Sheffield United keeper. Um, uh, and Aaron Ramsdale. Back to me, Bournemouth. From, from Bournemouth. Aaron Ramsdale. It reminds me of that, you know, probably needs, probably needs to fill out a bit more as he, as he gets older. You know, he's got quite a slim physique, but like I said, uh, temperament, technically, if he's playing with the, with the younger age groups at England, it shows that, he, you know, he's well thought of. So hopefully there's, there's a player there with prospect. In terms of the rest of the back four, I mean, I think Wickham's big threat on the night was set plays. You know, they, they throw the long ball into the box. They, they, they deliver it into the ball in the box. And really then, it's about your organisation. Second ball's off, off Hakim Fenwa. I thought what they did quite well at times, getting in front of him. That's, a, that's the key when you get someone as big as he is, getting someone in front of him on his toes to constrict the space, which they did. Hogg did that a couple of times and the lads in front. So that's, a, you know, and listen... Clean sheet is a confidence boost to the back four and the goalkeeper. That's a massive thing. I do think the bigger and better teams in the divisional ask a lot more questions of you. You know, putting men forward, going forward with a little bit more quality than we saw tonight. But take a clean sheet, definitely. And and obviously in terms of in terms of that set set pieces have been something that that have have caused Huddersfield Town problems uh, in in recent weeks, recent months. To, to play against a Wickham side that is this physical and, and this direct, strong in aerial uh, duels is really pleasing again from that point of view, isn't it? That, that, that we kept them out and we didn't concede from a set piece. Yep. Uh, sorry, I never thought that would be fair. Yeah, no. Um, you have a movie going, mate. Yeah, yeah, sure. You weren't going to sell it for them, were you? <laughs> yeah. It, it, you're right, Adam. It, it, has, it, it was important. Uh, as we saw, on again, I'm going back to, to Saturday's game, a couple of set pieces, which 
is so annoying to a manager because I'm sure he'll have been working all week on, on Stoke set pieces. He'll know exactly what he'll, what we're, what we're, they were going to do. He'll have, all the men will have meant to be picked up. And then to, to, to let a couple of set pieces in, it is so frustrating. So again, today, take another positive. Uh, we can, that, that's what we can, we're looking for. Pump the ball up, get get bits, get the bits, get the corners, get the long throws, like it, like if you said, and then and let, and let's play from there. But I thought we defended ever ever, ever so well. Uh, can't remember many. I don't think they wore one free header in in the box from it from a set piece. Uh, so Carlos, for one, it'll be de- definitely a lot more pleasing uh, after today tonight's show, especially the back four and and as you say the set pieces. And it's so important because if you just switch off. For one second, even in the last minute, when the last five minutes, when they were pushing, pushing forward, and they were throwing, throwing men in the bo- the box, we, we were we were strong and we were switched on. Uh, Oggy, Oggy, obviously uh, slipping back into that back three, and it's not easy for for Oggy when even at times he would against Sakin Fenwara and and the other couple of big, big lads. Uh, but no, they stood the ground, concentrated for, for well, but what it 96, 96 minutes and plus. Uh, and and that's what it is because one one switch off and it can be game over. And, and as the game we're going today, if we'd have conceded in that last ten minutes, we'd have probably gone down one 0 And and if you, you touched upon it earlier in terms of our attacking play and and chances created, we didn't create a whole load. Do, do you think uh, in terms of a development and improvement? Uh, on that, you touched upon it earlier a little bit. Is it just a case of being a little bit more dynamic, someone taking more of a risk to to burst forward or, or to make a different kind of run? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's easy to say from sat, sat in front of the TV or whatever, but it just looked like the, you know, I think when you play against a team where they haven't got an awful lot of pace, I know the boy Odin, Odin Dimna carried a little bit of a threat, but you know, against against Akin Fenner, he's not going to run in behind you. So you can push up quite high, which means you can push your fullbacks on a little bit more. Just for the town fullbacks were a little bit deep. He didn't join in well enough with the wide players because once that happens, you're playing two v one or even three v two in wide areas. You take that extra ball in. Some of them balls that went across the ball, the box in the first, they go in with a bit more quality. Then they have players flooding the box a bit more. I just thought they were a little bit deeper than they needed to be as a team. But like I said, the disappointing thing was, I think they looked like they'd, they'd, talk, they'd spoken about that at the break, about pushing up and getting a little bit tighter, playing in their half, playing a bit quicker. And then, like I said, the long stoppage with, um, the, with, the, with the working player just seemed to take the dull edge of the game and struggle to... Re- Momentum's a massive thing in a game. It is, and, you know, it came at the right time for Wickham, just dull the centres a little bit for time, but they thought they'd just stepped on a little bit. But going forward, you know, as a team, you know, like I say, they've got the point now. If they can just do that, especially at heart home, where they're probably expected to try and play a bit more on the front foot. If they can, you know, be a little bit braver, the, the boy stars probably got a bit of pace, so they can they can play a little bit higher up the pitch. I always like to see the teams play up the pitch. They always have one sitter, but if the two midfielders can get a little pocket to either side of him, join in with Campbell. Campbell's still got a goal in him. He's a, he's a bit wilier now. Uh, in, in, in his dotage than he used to be, but he's still a quality player. We get the ball around to him, so but he needs that service now. You know, me and Boothy will know as you get a bit older, you do need that service. Need the ball going in around you. You just need a little bit better service than he got tonight. I think you're right there, if uh, and what what we didn't do as well, and probably all, all into the last 10, 15 minutes, we didn't get Lewis O'Brien or Carol Eitling into. Or, into the game, they never got. We never got them on, yeah. on the ball, and especially first half. And maybe that was Wickham's game plan: pushes out wide, uh, get, let, uh, don't let us go through the middle. So if we could have got Carol or, or Lewis on the ball, then that's where you can slip your balls through to to, to phase you. Obviously, it still works hard, doesn't it? And he's as you said, he's is wily in his experience, but he still makes good runs. And if we could have got them on the ball, then you slip them down. Down the channels for for Fraser. He'll, he'll run on to him, and, and as you know, he gets two or three chances. He'll, he'll put one away. But today, we, I just felt we didn't get him on the on the ball enough for us to to have that little bit of quick passing, one twos in and around the box. 
everything had to go wide. And maybe that was because Wickham were, were make it, make, making us and, and there was just no room in the middle for us. And then the, the there was chance. space in the, in the line. There was a little bit of space between the lines, you know, and notice, you know, Wickham's organisation was sound enough, but they did drop deep. And the little pockets that they could have played in it, I thought, I thought, you know, once they beat the, you know, once they got into the second, into the opposition half in the first half, they didn't move the ball quick enough. They didn't get little combinations going quick enough. Everything was, you know, they forced that final ball. You know, they got in a nice little situation in the last day. Then that final ball didn't have enough quality on it. So I think that's what you're probably after, just a little bit more work in that final third, getting runners off Fraser when, he, when the ball goes, pops into his feet so we can play little give and goes. Little one twos, and they're all work that you on the training pitch. You know, I don't know. I'm sure the manager doesn't need me telling you that. Just having the time to do it. I know it's a truncated season. You wonder how much time these managers are getting to practice on the training field these days. But you see the better teams when they're doing that little combinations and and, and um, using the wide players, getting the full backs up in up in forward positions. The, then the quality comes out. And we did arguably have the, the best chance of the game right at the end of the, the first half, didn't we, Boothy, when um, Nabi Saar just met Isaac and Benz's fantastic ball into the box. Yeah, great great ball from, from M. Benz. As I said, it, there were two or three super balls it, it, it put in, especially in that first half. And I know I, I said it earlier, but he's getting better and better for me and he's, he's, he's getting stronger and you can see he's more confident. He's... He's wanting to get get on the ball, and, and he's making things happen now. Uh, and he's getting into some some great positions. And, and the ball he put in for, for Nabi Sar, uh, it's an impossible ball for defenders. Just over the top of the the, the front man, Nab, Nabi's thrown himself at it, got a toe poke onto it, and, and he's he's so unlucky that it's easy coming off coming off off the post. Another day that had just could have sneaked into the into the into the side net in it. So yeah, you go in then. 1-0, I say they're only a couple of minutes before half time and then second half's a complete, completely different game. They have to come out and, and chase the game and maybe then that's when your gaps open and that's like if he says your pockets, uh, your players get into them pockets and then you can start playing round them. So it was a big, big, big opportunity but Naby couldn't do any more. A super ball from Mbenza and, and when you throw yourself like that, you're just hoping, he had a good connection, we were just hoping he'd see that, uh, that net rattling. And Benza seemed to be central to, to all the, the, the good opportunities we had, didn't he, Ify? I mean, uh, early on in the second half, you mentioned that the, the intensity rose. He, he had a good opportunity, I think, on, on the 50th minute. Uh, and then later on in the half, he, he broke into the box a couple of times, was, was slipped, into behind, uh, slipped in behind and was looking for that cutback or tested the keeper. He's really a, a good outlet for us, isn't he? Yeah, he seems to have a mix of everything. He can play with his back to goal or can he play the ball into his feet. He can roll players and go the other side. I liked it better when he played a quick one touch and then went and got down the other side of the defender. He did that a couple of times, but really good. And then you just want players flooding the box by catch up with play a little bit. Maybe that's that combination, just once you get in the box, getting your head up and maybe picking people out. I think once you further outside the box, you're looking to put the ball in areas for players to attack. But once you get in, you know, down the line, down the side of the box, you're trying to pick people out then. We just didn't quite manage to do it. I think there's one great, great attempt when he checked back onto his left foot. He's done everything right then and he's tried to roll across, across the six-yard box and the defender. And, you know, that was the thing. I think that's where Tamer really just got asking a lot of questions other than his last really asking questions of the defence, a bit of last-ditch tackling from them, a little foot in just around the corner. And like I say, I keep harping back to it. I think they went down, there was a stoppage then for a long time, they didn't quite get the momentum back. But in that little period, you know, I hadn't seen an awful lot, awful lot from Boothie, I'll take, they must take Boothie's word of that, but he looked to really fall in the game. And you thought if anyone's going to make the difference, it could be him. Um, I, I, I did, a bit disappointed in this chance, uh, I think, when it came across to him, you know, you never quite fancied him. Um, it, it looks all right, it's, but it's rise and goes over the ball. You know, you really want, especially on a night like tonight, just want to make the keeper work. Make the keeper work, 
you know, take a touch if you need to, make the keeper work and see what see whether they can snaffle any rebounds. But in terms of his creation and his final ball, like I said, a lot of the good stuff came from him down his side of the pitch. If you have got a que- I've got a question for you. And this is your obviously referee analysis head head on. I know obviously yeah, it's you watch the Premier League and that and you you adjudicate referees and, and today I thought yeah, I, I thought the referee did well. But I was sat watching the game with, with my son and he's off 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 the, the the sofa crying out for that ball. Probably what twenty minutes to, to go. It's it's it the lad lad's hand and he's it's controlled it and he's cleared it. Surely I know your Premier League and VAR, surely VAR would have had a given a would you have given a penalty for that? I mean, you know, we're old school groovy. I don't think I, I, th- I think I think we might think back when we played no, but as the current law is at the moment, that I, I thought the same straight away. I think it was McCleary, wasn't he? Come on long. Yeah. The, he was unlucky in some respects. The, the boys headed it straight at him, but it's clearly hit him on the hand. I think if that's the I think if that's the Premier League. It's a penalty all day long. But you know, the, so tiny and lucky, Wickham have got away with one a little bit. But I agree. I think the handball. I think the handball law is still very much contentious. Um, we're still working our way around it. And I guess the other argument is there's not a town player near the ball looking to exploit anything. It's not like the clear is guided away from anyone. It's just hit him. But it's pretty much strict limits. It's most, at the moment, the way I look at the Premier League, it's very much strict liability. Hits you in any circumstances, any way, it's a penalty. So I, w- I think that would have been given very much so. I know what we'd have been doing if it, if that had been if that had been us, and I didn't see it. And I know there were no town players around him. We'd we'd have all ten men would have been around the referee in the face, wanting <laughs> that, wanting that penalty. Would have been chasing him the, up the pitch, yeah, yeah. What, wanting that that pen, penalty. Hopefully, and I know it's not the right thing to, to say, but then hopefully the next 50-50 decision you get, it, it might give it to us. And I've always said I think. In the last couple of years, we're just a bit too nice. We don't get, we don't see us getting in the the ref, ref face and trying to trying to not. I'm not saying saying cheap, but just trying to influence the referee to give us that 50-50 decision to go our way instead instead of instead of going to the oppositions. And sometimes you've just got to have a a few of you have a word in, in the in the refs refs here and 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 it, it does work if you don't it. We've we've been. It does. It does work. Yeah, I mean, we both we both played in teams. I played against managers. I played for managers and says, "Don't let him referee the game." And they're not talking about the referee; they're talking about the opposition's defender, <laughs> opposition captain. Because that's what happens, especially against the big clubs. They're literally referee in the game. Come on, ref, give us that. Well done, ref. You know, over exaggerate. That's brilliant, ref. You know, they're just it's playing mind games, like you say. So. So, uh, yeah, very much so. And, and it's about being streetwise a little bit. Like you said, that's not one given. But if something happens 60 seconds, 60 seconds later, same part of the pitch opening might just give you that one. You know, they're only human, aren't they? Exactly. And it is. It's just forcing the issue and it just just telling him and yeah. in his mind that, hang on, I might have made a mistake there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, absolutely, and then if you obviously this is the second time you, you've been on the show with us, the, the first game I believe you watched was was Nottingham Forest, and obviously tonight's game wasn't the most eye-catching display uh, from Carlos Corberan's side. But c- can you see developments from from the two games in in terms of how Huddersfield Town have progressed under him? Yeah, I think there's a bit more of a pattern there. Um, I think you can see what you what they're trying to do under him. They're trying to play out from the back. I think he can still be braver. Like I say, Wickham dropped off a little bit. You see many teams now pressing, pressing quite high. I'd love to have seen what Town would have done with a team that pressed really high. They only pressed him a couple of times in the first half. And actually, that was the thing that I thought, when, once you beat the... I mean, when you play out from the back, it's a bit of risk and reward. The, the risk is you play near the back, if you lose it, to, to, uh, play gets turned over, you're in trouble. But the reward is you beat the press, you're out and you're playing, you're potentially playing 5v5. 
um, going at speed. And once they did that a couple of times, that's the thing that knows for me. Then they slowed it down. With actually, that's the press. That's all you want. You want to go matched up then, 5v5. Five five. You their players out of the game. Go go nice and quickly and pick that final pass. He just didn't do that well enough on the night. But I think if they can improve that, a little bit brave in possession, get them combinations right. And Brady, are you enjoying watching watching Huddersfield Town under this style? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been I've been lucky enough to to be able to watch uh, most of the games on on I I follow uh, and I am because and, and I, I'll be honest. Uh, Watching when we came back from lockdown uh, last last season, watching what the last 10, 11, 11 games of last season, starting this season, I, I've got to admit, I, I was quite worried because I, I couldn't see uh, as improve, uh, being able to improve that much to be able to compete in the, in this in this league. Uh, but Carlos has, has come in. Obviously, didn't have that much time, but and. After the first three or four games, you could definitely see a difference. I've got to admit, I've been very impressed with, with the signings they've made uh, in in the summer. I think Piper is a has been a, re- a revelation. Uh, I don't know why he's under, under twenty one still Spanish under tw- twenty one. So that's a, a great signing, and his attacking attacking force is 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 brilliant. So I think we will just get better and better. We're seeing uh, Carol like getting more game game time now. And you get him on the ball, and you don't play for Ajax uh, for for if you're not a good player. So he'll, he, again, I think towards the end of the season, as long as he gets a run of games, he'll he'll be coming better, better, stronger, and stronger. And Navi Sar at centre half, I think he's he's bolstered that uh, that left sided left sided uh, centre half position, which which we're struggling at. So from where we were before lockdown. Uh, to where we are now, there's been an absolute massive improvement, and that's only after Carlos has been there for for what two three months. So, yeah. and yeah, the results we've been a bit up and down, we've been a bit inconsistent, but the performances are definitely a lot better, and it's and it's been enjoyable to watch. It's been entertaining. We've been creating chances. We've been getting people in the boxes of other games where before. Before we weren't, and it were like if a team scored one goal, that were like it. You couldn't see us getting back in the game. But now there's goals in goals in the team. I know we're talking about a nil nil tonight, but over the last couple of months, with a team, and it is it's even though the results are not what we want, and obviously we're in the, the bottom half of the table, but we can we can the ent- the entertainment value, and it's it's been good watching, and it. I know it's not great when there's no fans in the stadium, but the players, you can see they're they giving 100%, but they're entertaining as well. Yeah, there, there we go. Uh, Boothie, Iffy, we've somehow managed to talk for a very long time and make a nil-nil draw uh, very interesting. Thank you very much for joining us and Huddersfield Town fans. Thank you for watching.